test anything out with the Maui stuff because yeah. I, I know that was not that was that no. was totally intentional. That yeah. Was, oh, then to come and give the people seven hundred fifty dollars, what a freaking yeah. joke! Not everyone even got Maui's it. My, I've been to Maui many, many times. Yeah. So this was a black car. Oh wow, the aluminum is all put on. Completely leveled. And the wires are left. And then the glass is all melted. Yeah, this looks like that Molly car. Was there anything else burning other than this is pretty much his car? This is a 35 foot fifth wheel. Motorhome. That was motorhome? It was a 35 foot thick wheel motorhome. Anything out with the Maui stuff because I know. Yeah. Notice this time on the way through, be sure to make note of her notations that she's made on the screen, including the high amount of rust that happens to this car, instant oxidization. Um, Mental Boost calls it uh, a form of electrolysis using the smoke as a medium of ion exchange. Just like normal rust uses water as the medium of ion exchange and requires a long amount of time, these fires create electrolysis that uses the smoke and instantly rusts every piece of the car after the fire. Also notice all the leaves on the ground even beneath the melted piles of aluminum. Also notice that wheel cover where the aluminum of the rim has melted but the wheel cover remains intact. Oftentimes those are made out of plastic or some sort of composite metal, maybe some sort of tin. Either way, whatever, whether it's plastic or tin, it probably has about the same or a similar melting point as aluminum but the difference is and the reason why it is still intact is because it doesn't have the same conductivity of the electricity the microwave energy as the aluminum just like when you put a plastic bowl in a microwave the plastic bowl doesn't get hot the food inside the bowl gets hot similarly the plastic wheel cover doesn't get hot the uh, metal rim that the wheel cover is on gets hot because it's conducting the magnetic uh, electromagnetic frequencies of the microwave energy that is causing these fires. Again, when I say plasma fire, I'm not specifying whether it's intentional or direct and directed, or if it's a natural phenomenon springing forth randomly in an undirected way. But this fire clearly indicates all of the patterns of plasma fire. Notice the door is missing, the hood is missing, the glass is melted. Normal fire doesn't do any of that. No. Yeah. Oh, then to come and give the people $750, what a freaking yeah. joke. Yeah. Not everyone even got Maui's it. My I've been to Maui many, many times. Yeah. So this is a black car. Oh, wow. The aluminum is all put on. Notice that the fender is missing you can see the inside of the wheel well the engine the entire engine block is gone you'll see that at the very end of the video the empty cavity where the engine once was fire doesn't do that and then the glass is all melted yeah this looks like that molly cover the dry leaves have literally fallen inside the burnt car. Inside, you can see them in there. <laughs> missing fender, missing hood, missing engine block. Missing engine block. That is the empty cavity where the engine once was. Regarding these glowing, what I thought looked like rocks in the previous video that I showed, they may just be logs 
or they could be rocks. The fact that they are glowing red hot with nearly zero flame coming out of them is kind of what threw me off. If they are logs, they're not burning like logs that you would see burning in a normal fire where there's smoke and flame and charcoal and ash. They're all glowing red hot simultaneously. This, whether or not they're logs, and they just very well may be, it may just be cut up pieces of wood that they were going to throw into a log splitter. Though they are different sizes and shapes, one guy said maybe it's at like a tree farm, a tree nursery, where they grow trees in pots. And those are all the contents of the pots that include the root ball that have been emptied out of the pot after the tree has been cut off. Or maybe they have the pot still on them. Because even if you emptied out those pots, they still maintain the basic shape. Because the root ball is keeping the dirt all together. Not sure what they are. But let's just assume for a minute that they're logs, pieces of wood. Very dense pieces of wood. Thus they are attracting the microwave energy far more than the more flammable material around them. All the shrubbery and all the brush right next to them. And I had a video, once I looked, I couldn't find it, and it's been hundreds of videos, where there was a uh, log mill, a, 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 a lumber mill, where they had stacks of trees that have had the limbs removed from them that they are just down to the trunk, stacked 50 feet high and 100 feet long, probably 10,000 trees per stack. And some of these stacks were glowing red hot from one end to the other. All 10,000 trees simultaneously glowing red hot like they are superheated internally through uh, magnetic resonance heating or magnetic resonance induction or geomagnetic induction. It is a microwave that is superheating them from the center that causes them all to glow red hot. You couldn't cause a, a, a pile of logs to burn like this. If you had a can of gas and 10,000 blowtorches, all right, everyone turn your blowtorches on for the first 60 seconds, and then turn them off and see what we've got. You wouldn't see a bunch of logs glowing like this without any flame coming off of them, glowing red hot. You couldn't do that unless you had some sort of pinky in the brain microwave weapon or some other natural phenomenon. I, I try not to, I try to stay away from whether or not it's intentionally directed or natural phenomenon and simply focus on the type of energy that is evident here by the burn patterns that are left behind. And that is what I refer to when I talk about plasma fire. But in some cases, it's clearly directed. Just like we saw the engine block missing out of that car. So we did. We saw the same thing. With the five Secret Service cars destroyed by plasma fire after they were returned to the Hertz Rental Company, they all had their engine block melted out of them through a very similar process as what we're now seeing in California. These were clearly intentionally directed. The President's Secret Service rented five vehicles from Hertz Rental. They didn't, write, they didn't rent ten. They didn't rent seven, they rented five, and all five of those vehicles had their engine block melted hours after they were returned to the Hertz Rental Company. All five of them, engine block melted, hours after returned to the Hertz Rental Company. No other cars on the lot caught fire, but those five that were returned by the Secret Service to the Hertz Rental Company. All five had the same exact damage, only burned under the hood. So clearly, we're seeing the same pattern here over there in California right now where that car has its engine block missing. All right, I'm trying to get another shot here. There we go, come on, please. There's another example from a different fire. Engine block missing. But I want it. Doors missing. Engine block missing. Doors missing. Fire doesn't do that, but that's what we're seeing there in California now. And that's what we saw in the case of the five Secret Service vehicles. And clearly in that case, it is directed. It is intentional. There is a clear target. There's no way you can dismiss that as some sort of random fluke, like a random... 
force of nature like geomagnetic induction just happened to strike the five vehicles rented by the Secret Service hours after they returned them to the car lot. Seeing if we can find some more good... Uh, here's where they cover it. That was a one-day story where, look, Biden's Secret Service cars burst into flames. That's not just me saying it. It was a one-day story that they covered up and forgot about and stopped talking about immediately. Clearly, that is directed and intentional, proving that this type of fire that I call plasma fire can be weaponized and directed. I am not denying that, but I do suspect that much of what we are seeing is like a side effect. Possibly they punctured the magnetic field to charge their fiber optic laser weapons, and then once they let, let it close back up, it leaks like a leaky faucet, and that's why we see all these little plasma fires here and there and everywhere. My point is, clearly, there are instances where it is directed and intentional, and we are seeing the same pattern in California, so it's reasonable to investigate and question whether or not this is directed. It's not, oh, what, you think they control the weather too? <laughs> Only idiots, soft-minded people taking a hardline stance on things they don't understand, who are incapable of processing this type of information, respond like that. Adaptation comes in two forms, assimilation and accommodation. This type of information that we're being presented with, with these fires that melt the engine block, remove the doors and the hood, and melt the glass of the cars, that doesn't assimilate into our current world view, into our current paradigm. We must accommodate and make some new files in your mental filing cabinet to insert these information into. These files don't have any place within your filing cabinet where they fit. They don't assimilate into your world view. You must accommodate in order to adapt and accommodation requires some sort of mental adjustment that causes anxiety and a mental and emotional pain and distress of growing, growing pains in order to expand your mental filing cabinet to include these new files where you can incorporate this information into. Our long-standing dominance in air power through long-range fires, anti-axis aerial denial, and other asymmetric capabilities designed to counter our strengths. So not a conspiracy after all, Mark Esper, the secretary. In air power. Destroyed. Anyway. But this is supposedly false. Our near peer rivals, China and Russia, seek to erode our long-standing dominance in air power through long-range fires, anti-axis aerial denial systems, and other Asymmetric capabilities designed to counter our strengths. So not a conspiracy after all. Mark Esper, the Secretary of Defense of the United States, actually declared that Russia and China have satellites that can actually cause fires. China and Russia seek to erode our long-standing dominance in air power through long-range fires. He also confirms that they have actually militarized space, weaponized it, and they actually have DUWs that can actually cause the fires and do all this kind of stuff. Meanwhile, in space, Moscow and Beijing have turned a once peaceful arena into a warfighting domain. They have weaponized space through killer satellites, directed energy weapons, and more in an effort to exploit our systems and chip away at our military advantage. A new conspiracy theory? Yeah, okay. Yeah, this stuff's real. He actually confirmed it. This is apparently one of these...